shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, I'm so fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this, the 35th iteration of the Konoha Companion. This is Joshua, as always, and I'm your Konoha Companion. And on this episode, we're going to be covering episode 34 of Naruto, entitled Akamaru Trembles, Gara's Cruel Strength. And to stick to format before we dive too far off into that, we're going to go over what happened on the previous episode in my own words, kind of briefly. And so, uh, basically, the episode starts with Sasuke having a flashback to his younger self, Um, while under the curse mark induced unconsciousness. While that's transpiring, Ino Shikacho protects Sakura and the gang, even if they're terrified and don't necessarily want to, but they just can't stand by and watch while their village mates go down. Choji particularly is scared. Zaku, however, calls Choji a fatso, and this pushes Choji's button big time. It sends Choji off the deep end, and at this point, Team 10 introduces battle formation Ino Shikacho, which is uh, the kind of penchant of Team 10. Um, it's obviously Ino, Shikamaru, Choji, right? Ino Shikacho. Uh, basically, Choji uses partial expansion jutsu to become very spherical. Then he uses a leaf style taijutsu, and then he uh, uses those two in conjunction to do the human boulder jutsu which basically comes in like a wrecking ball and makes the opponents have to move around. In the chaos, Shikamaru is able to use his shadow possession jutsu, and Ino is able to take over whoever's left body with her mind transfer jutsu. And so in this circumstance, Choji goes after Zaku, who can't control him, even though he tries to use his uh, pressurized air to do so, but Choji is just spinning too fast. Dosu goes to save Zaku, but Shikamaru stops him with his shadow possession jutsu, forcing Dosu to stand in an embarrassing pose. Ino hits Keen with the mind transfer jutsu. Uh, her body goes limp as she transfers into Keen. Uh, she then points a kunai at her own throat while in the body of Keen, uh, effectively holding Keen hostage and tells Team Dosu to drop their scrolls and that she'll let Keen live. Zaku blasts Ino while in the body of Keen with a blast of pressurized air from his hands. Dosu admits they uh, aren't there for a scroll or passing a test. They're there for Sasuke, and they'll kill Keen if they have to. Shikamaru's shadow possession jutsu falters and Dosu escapes. Neji and Tintin show up to save the day. Neji locks his Byakugan on the battlefield, and this uh, freaks Dosu out, right? Dosu's high level enough to recognize something crazy's happening. Neji remarks on a nasty chakra, presumably the Orochimaru chakra in Sasuke now. Sasuke is uh, revisiting his trauma in his mind during the flashback still, and this is when Orochimaru springs his trap, uh, basically luring Sasuke in with power, Uh, so that he can avenge his family. Sasuke suddenly wakes up, and um, when he wakes up, he has this, like, wild purple chakra swirling all around him. Uh, And his curse mark is glowing red, and it spreads, like, all over half his body before cooling off, and um, it's basically left as what looks like a tattoo all over half of his body. Sasuke says uh, he's an avenger and he'll let uh, himself be consumed by evil in exchange for the power necessary to avenge his family. And as Sasuke turns to fight, Ino Shikacho make their timely escape to the bushes. Sasuke's curse mark activates again and glows again and covers his entire body before cooling off and leaving the curse mark to look like a tattoo all over his entire body. Zaku disregards Dosu's warnings and uh, hits Sasuke with a supersonic slicing wave, which was a really dope jutsu. It was really neat to see. When the dust settles, Sasuke has already gotten the squadlings to safety and is standing next to Zaku and karate chops him to the ground. Sasuke then launches his fire-style phoenix flower jutsu at Zaku. 
Zaku hits the fireballs with his pressurized air, which extinguishes the flames, but it reveals that there were shuriken hiding within the flames. Zaku doesn't have time to react and get hit, gets hit directly with the shuriken. Sasuke then gets behind him and grabs him uh, by the arms, and he puts his foot between his shoulder blades, and he breaks his arms like a fucking crazy person. Sasuke turns on and starts to approach Dosu, who's clearly terrified at this point. Sakura recognizes the Orochimaru energy and uh, hugs and begs Sasuke to stop before he takes out Dosu as well. This somehow causes Sasuke's curse mark to recede, which then causes Sasuke to collapse. So again, Sakura ain't useless, dog. Sakura is out here saving Naruto's life and deactivating Orochimaru curse marks on Sasuke with her love hugs. Dosu offers up his scroll in exchange for his life, admitting Sasuke is entirely too strong to defeat. As Dosu walks off, Sakura asks him what the deal is, and Dosu admits he has no idea, and he's clearly bothered by this. He then walks off into the forest. Naruto is still passed out, and Sasuke is clearly troubled by what just transpired, and the episode ends. And so, where we're at now, with Sasuke laying on the ground... Uh, Orochimaru comes rushing in and leaps towards Naruto and, Sa- and uh, Sakura. And right in this moment, Orochimaru thrusts his kunai forward and everything freezes as the title slide comes in and Naruto reads, Akamaru trembles, Gara's cruel strength. Suddenly, Naruto is screaming and it's revealed that Choji hit him on the head with a stick to wake him up. And Naruto now has a huge bonk on his head and he stands up and sees that Sakura and Sasuke are sitting together. He then sees Eno he, uh, helping, Rock Lee around, helping Rock Lee about, and uh, suddenly the thought of Orochimaru beams into his head, and he thinks, the grass ninja. It's funny because at this point, he was unconscious. He didn't even get to hear that it's Orochimaru. Like, he's way behind. He's still thinking it's just a, like a powered-up grass ninja, but he's right for panicking. Uh, he immediately panics. He looks around and yells, everybody hide. Quick, get down. As he leaps on the ground... He then continues, that grass ninja, where could she be hiding? And Sakura and Sasuke look back at him. And when Sakura sees him, she questions Naruto. Ino looks at Naruto and scowls, thinking, it's about time the lazy fool woke up. As Naruto is looking around frantically, Choji starts poking the big bump on Naruto's head with the stick that he hit him with. And Shikamaru mocks, you really are one of a kind, that's for sure. And I mean, you're the kind that gets on my nerves. Naruto uh, just like kind of groans in frustration and continues looking around trying to gain his bearings. When suddenly he notices Sakura's hair is short now. And he yells out, oh no, Sakura. And uh, Sakura and Sasuke both look over at him in confusion. And Naruto bolts their way, yelling all the while, Sakura, Sakura, something happened, something serious happened to your your hair. And you're just clearly panicked by this. Sakura kind of chuckles as she reacts, and uh, she reaches up to touch her hair, and she says, Oh, that's all? I just wanted to change my look. I like it better long, but when I'm out in the wilderness like this, and I'm moving around all the time, it gets in the way too much. And obviously, she's just, like, putting on a brave face, right? She was growing that shit out for Sasuke. It was a big deal, but, you know, it, she cut it off to save Sasuke. So, you know, what, what, do you, what do you do? In this moment, Shikamaru and Choji come strolling up behind Naruto. And Naruto kind of turns his head towards them and asks, So what's your story? Why are you guys here in the first place? What's going on around here? Shikamaru and Choji both groan in unison. Shikamaru says to Naruto, Explaining everything to you is going to be such a pain. Sakura then chimes in with a smile, still messing with her hair. Everyone just showed up to help. And Naruto questions, what? And Ino, watching this transpire, thinks, Sakura sure is putting on a brave face, and it kind of gives her a little smile, right? You can tell she's proud of her rival. Uh, And in this moment, suddenly, Tintin lands in front of Eno, who says, I'll take care of him for now, Eno. And Eno simply responds, uh, okay. And Tintin immediately starts shaking Rock Lee violently and yelling, come on, Lee, pull it together, snap out of it already at once. 
And Lee then drops to his knees and starts to sh uh, shake the cobwebs out. He opens his eyes and looks up as he asks, Tintin, is that you? What are you doing here? Tintin responds, I came to help you out. What do you think? Lee then looks around and asks, where are those sound ninja guys? Tintin then tells him, don't worry, Sasuke took care of them. And Lee is like clearly shocked by this. Even He even looks over at Sasuke and questions aloud, really? Because remember, Rock Lee beat Sasuke's ass one-on-one, -on -one, and then Sasuke turned around and beat the hell out of three ninjas all by himself. And so, uh, you know, MMA math, right? It, it's it's kind of shocking to Rock Lee, but also Rock Lee isn't privy to the fact that uh, Sasuke has received a power-up in the form of a curse mark um, from Orochimaru. So that's that's a big differentiator as well. Tintin Ten then questions, what were you thinking, rushing in there all by yourself? Look at you, you're a total mess. Lee, ashamed, looks down briefly, but responds, well, Sakura was in trouble. I had to do something, right? And Tintin Ten thinks to herself, he's got to be kidding. He had to know he didn't stand a chance against all those guys. Tintin Ten then says to Lee, that was pretty darn stupid, don't you think? And Lee admits, well... I cannot really argue with you on that. Which is dope, right? I mean, Lee doesn't Lee wasn't making a smart decision. He was making a heart decision. He was following his heart to protect Sakura. The power of friendship, 1010. Get with the program. Um Naruto suddenly comes uh strolling up, yelling, Oh ha, I know you bushy brow kind of mocking him, and uh, in this moment, Sakura yells from the side, hey, knock it off, you better not say anything bad about Lee. And she hits Naruto with a big right hand that sends him spinning and flying, bloody nose style, classic shit. As Naruto lays on his back, he thinks, what in the world happened while I was asleep? Everyone's gone crazy. Shikamaru, watching this, groans and says to Choji, old Naruto is completely out of the loop. Choji adds, so far out of the loop, he doesn't even know there is a loop. He's not going to be the hero of this little story. And Sakura then addresses Lee saying, thank you. Because of you, I was able to stand up for myself and I've become a little stronger. And this like brings tears to Lee's eyes uh, as he thanks Sakura and continues, but I guess my efforts alone were not good enough. He then looks at Sasuke and says, So Sasuke, you are as good as your reputation. Just what you would expect from the Uchiha clan. To chase off those ninja, you must be very strong. Unlike me, I just got beaten to a pulp. And this clearly shocks Sasuke, right? Because he was unconscious during that. He didn't know. He just woke up and beat some ass. Um, and so he thinks to himself, What's he talking about? Beaten to a pulp. Is he serious? Are those guys really that strong? And like obviously in this moment, Sasuke's having to like grapple with his newfound power, right? Like I think he, he, in in the same way that it shocked Lee that Sasuke was able to beat up some guys that beat up Lee, it's also shocked Sasuke that Sasuke was able to beat up some guys that beat up Lee. And so uh, you know this has been like a really revelatory experience for like everybody involved. Lee then continues. Sakura, the lotus of the leaf village, blossoms twice. When we meet again, I will have become a stronger ninja. I promise. And this makes Sakura and Tintin smile when suddenly Ino yells from her from the side, Hey Sakura, come over here, as she waves her over. She then continues, I want to fix your hair for you, okay? Sakura smiles and responds, Yeah, I'd like that. Eno then starts uh, fixing her hair to make it nice, and even while they're doing this, they can't help but talk shit. Eno's grumbling the whole time. Why you sneaky little troll, hugging him like that, billboard brow? And Sakura glares back at her and says, Haven't you ever heard the expression, all's fair in love and war, little Eno pig? Neji, still on his tree branch, looks on at the entire scene and thinks, Sasuke Uchiha, he's a stronger opponent than I could have imagined. And a strong wind howls between the two of them. Suddenly, we're taken to a new scene where Akamaru, uh, Kiba's ninja hound, 
little pup is shivering and whimpering on the ground, right? And they're like inside. Uh, and Kiba reaches down to pet his head as he asks, Hey, Akamaru, you okay? And Shino asks, Is he still shaking? He's been at it for a half a day already. Hinata kneels down and takes a look at Akamaru. And Kiba responds to Shino saying, I don't blame him after what happened. It's because of what he saw. And at this point, we're given a flashback to Team 8 um, running along the tree branches. And as they leap from branch to branch, Kiba excitedly calls out, I know we'll be the ones to survive this, right, Akamaru? And Akamaru lets out a joyful yap, which Kiba interprets as an affirmative. Kiba then continues, Of course, it's lucky for us that the people caught in the trap had an earth scroll, and now that we're going to be the first ones to reach the tower. Shino immediately chimes in, Don't get overconfident. That's a dangerous mistake to make. No matter how small a bug is, it still has to guard itself at all times. We have to make sure that we don't encounter any enemies. That's the only way to be safe. To which Kiba responds, Yeah, I know that, Shino. But as usual, you gotta say it in a weird, vague way, bug nerd. And Kiba then pushes ahead and Shino grunts in frustration as he follows. Hinata weighs in, Yeah, but Kiba, what Shino said, he does kind of have a point, you know. Kiba responds, Yeah, I know, just come on. Hinata then thinks to herself, I sure hope nothing's happening to Naru out there, Naruto out there, right? And this is dope, uh, because Hinata's always pulling for Naruto. Like, literally, since the very first time we've met Hinata, she's been pulling for Naruto, and she's still pulling for him here. Even while she's out running towards danger, the thought of, is Naruto okay, is in her mind. Which is like, that's love, bro. That's real life love. That girl, she's a good girl. Suddenly, Akamaru and Kiba both, like at the same time, pick up a scent. Kiba then stops on the next branch and tells his teammates, Hold on, guys, we have to stop. Hinata and Shino both land on the branch on either side of Kiba. As they land, Shino asks why. Kiba responds, We're being careful not to encounter any enemies, right? He then looks over at Hinata and says, All right, Hinata, I want you to check out a kilometer ahead in that direction, as he points into the forest, in the direction of the smell, presumably. Hinata nods and says, Here goes, as she casts her appropriate hand sign and says aloud, Byakugan. Her eyes open and the veins on the side of her head protrude and the, like, metal shinking sound effect goes on. Um, and there's also a circle that, like, emanates from her third eye out, right? It's, like, very, very fast. Like, there's a, a visual cue that goes along with this. It shows us Hinata's perspective as she moves her perspective forward with her Byakugan. As her perspective goes whizzing through the trees, we reach a clearing where Hinata spots Gara. Hinata says to her teammates, yes, there's someone there, all right. And this is really cool. This is one of the first times that we've really gotten to, like, see what the Byakugan can do. And, like, she was literally able to spot an enemy ninja a kilometer away. And that's really cool because they're in this uh, sensory team together, right? She's with Kiba, who can smell someone from a mile away. He can't pinpoint their exact location, but he can smell them from a mile away. And so whenever he can sense someone anywhere within a mile... And then Hinata can pinpoint their presence immediately thereafter. That makes this seem really, uh, really, really good, right? Like, there's some really cool stuff that you can do with, uh, with those two skills in conjunction. And you can imagine that Shino and his bugs are going to find a way to, to complement that to the best of his ability. At this point, uh, you know, like I said, Hinata says to her teammates, yes, there is someone there, all right. Uh, and Shino then leans down and puts his ear to the tree branch. He then remarks, it sounds like there are six people there. And so shit, this dude Shino can literally like listen to the, listen to tree branches and tell how many people are walking a kilometer away. So you got sight, sense, and, and sound, right? Like Shino got that ultra, ultra dank hearing whenever he listens to the trees. Kiba's got that ultra dank nose and Akamaru's got an even ultra danker nose. And then Hinata's got them uh, Byakugan eyes that she can lock in on anything. So... 
you know, that's a that's a pretty neat little combo, bro. If Shino can hear you, Kiba can smell you, and Hinata can see you, you ain't getting close to these guys ever, bro. Kiba excitedly demands, all right, let's check it out. And this clearly throws the teammates for a loop, right? This is the exact opposite of what they said they were going to do. Uh, Hinata gasps, and Shino immediately asks, Kiba, what are you talking about? We're not going to do that. And Kiba looks down at Shino and responds, why not? The test administrator said that we had to get both a heaven and an earth scroll, right? But she didn't say we couldn't take more than that. He then raises his arms as he continues, If we get more scrolls, there will be fewer to go around, and that means other teams will get cut out of the competition. And he, like, laughs triumphantly. But look, first we'll just go check it out, okay? If it looks too dangerous, we won't battle them. Now come on, let's go. And he takes off without waiting for confirmation. Shino frustratedly remarks, he's the kind of guy that even the hungriest insects would avoid as he leaps into action. Hinata then follows the group deeper into the forest in the direction of Gara. And, uh, man, Kiba is a dumbass, right? Like, I mean, he, he, granted, he's following through on what he said he would. Um, you know, he said that they wouldn't engage with anybody. They're just going to go check some stuff out. But I mean, come on, bro, Kiba, for real. We ought to be, y'all ought to be going straight to the tower. Y'all already have a scroll. Like, y'all could be making really good time right now instead of going and walking into a fight with fucking Gara. But here we are. Uh, Kiba's making decisions and taking decisive action on behalf of the team. And they're having to roll with the punches and. Uh, They roll into the next scene, which is Akamaru on the ground whimpering in the forest floor. And they're like behind some bushes. And Kiba asks, what's wrong, Akamaru? As Shino and Hinata land next to him behind the bushes. Hinata asks, what happened? You just stopped all of a sudden. Akamaru whimpers more and literally like crawls under Kiba's jacket for comfort. Kiba responds, yeah, something just spooked the little guy. Hinata asks, what scared him? To which Kiba responds, I have no idea. Akamaru has the ability to sniff the level of an enemy's chakra, but man, I've never seen him this scared by it before. Whoever those ninjas up ahead are, they aren't normal guys. And he like continues to comfort Akamaru. It then shows us the three versus three standoff Team 8 is coming up on. It's Team Sand versus a group of three hidden rain ninja. Two of the Hidden Rain Ninja are in straw hats, and there's one very large man with a head wrap and a scar on his right eye and on the right side of his face. They're all wearing matching jumpers, and they all have some sort of stick weapon sticking up from their backs. One of the straw hats says, Do you believe the nerve of these Sand Village Ninja Shigure challenging us head on? The other straw hat, presumably Shigure, responds, Yeah. They're a bunch of fools. Gara and team simply stand there in silence while this unfolds. Teammate continues watching from the bushes. Kiba wonders aloud, what's he thinking? That guy is too little to take on an opponent opponent that big. Akamaru whimpers and Kiba gasps. Hinata asks, what did Akamaru say? To which Kiba responds, that the big guy, he's big trouble. Hinata worriedly thinks to herself, they all look like they're bad news to me, like they're really strong. At this point, the big guy with the scar on his eye from the hidden rain demands, too bad, kids. You should have picked your opponents better. Now you're all going to die. Gara responds quickly, I've heard enough out of you. Let's make this quick. I don't want to waste time on this guy. This clearly, like, kind of shocks the big guy, and even Conqueror gives Gara some side eye here, thinking, "We don't even know what scroll these guys have." He then says aloud, "Hey, Gara, doesn't it make more sense to follow these punks and gather information first? I mean, if they have the same type of scroll as us, we're just fighting on an, us an unnecessary battle." Gara responds menacingly, I don't care. They looked at me the wrong way, so now they're going to die. Which is, I guess, fair. Like, big homie from the Hidden Mist was literally like, 
you guys should have picked better opponents. Y'all gonna fucking die. And now Gara's like, he came at me wrong. He gonna die. So we got us a death match here in the forest of death, which is poignantly named. Conqueror thinks in response to this, this is exactly why I didn't want to be stuck in the forest with him. And so evidently, like, Conqueror is aware of, like, a habitual craziness out of Gara. At this point, the big guy from the Hidden Rain squad angrily demands, if you think you can kill us, then try it. He then grabs the weapons from his back and draws them out, and they're revealed to be umbrellas. He then throws several of the umbrellas in the air. This freaks Conqueror out, but Gara can't even be bothered to unfold his arms. The big guy from the Rain Village then casts a hand sign and yells, Now, Ninja Art, Senbon Rainstorm. And the umbrella that are floating in the sky suddenly starts spinning and throwing Senbon down towards the ground. This, you know, clearly shocks the guys and teammate who are watching, and Hinata even thinks to herself, A rainstorm of needles. Suddenly, Team Sand is surrounded by a swirl of Senbon. The leader of the Hidden Rain team smiles and triumphantly announces, Up, down, left, right. No matter where you go, I can get you. There's no blind spot in this jutsu, and it's deadly accurate. Sinbon suddenly come raining down on Gara, and a plume of dust erupts from the impact. Sinbon continue to pour in on Gara while the uh, while you know there's basically a smoke screen, right? It hit, made a bunch of smoke, and now this, we're having Sinbon pour in here, presumably hitting Gara. The grass ninja smiles real big and thinks to himself, "Child's play." When the dust settles, it's revealed that Gara hasn't even uncrossed his arms. He's actually been protected by a dome of sand that the needles couldn't penetrate. Gara says from inside the cracked dome, is that all you can do? The grass ninja is immediately frightened and has to take a step back as he remarks, it can't be. Not one wound, impossible. He gathers himself and yells, all right as he casts the appropriate hand sign again and it launches more sin bonnet Gara. Gara's sand shield comes up and stops the incoming attack, no problemo. This clearly flusters the rain ninja and in this moment Gara asks, a sin bon rainstorm, huh? I have an idea, let's make it rain blood instead. At this point the three rain ninja are completely shook, right? Like. They just hit him with their best jutsu and did nothing. And now this dude's talking about making it rain blood. Oh, shit. As Team 8 continues to watch from the bushes, Kiba, clearly worried, remarks, Man, his chakra is so powerful. And that sand. Do you smell that odor? It stinks. And Shino asks, Odor? To which Shino answers, It smells like blood. And so there's a blood infused this grass. He's out here killing folks at the sand. Uh, the leader of the grass ninja is sweating bullets at this point as he remarks aloud, he's created a wall of sand. Conqueror chimes in as Gara's sand dome slowly melts away. That's right, it's a defense and nothing can get through it. He carries around all that sand and the gourd on his back. And when he's attacked, he uses the power of his chakra to harden the sand. It's a jutsu that only Gara can do, and somehow it happens automatically, independent of his will. So any attacks against him are doomed to fail. And so this is neat, right? This is the first time I've ever seen Gara's sand shield in action, and it's the first time that we've ever heard it explained. To make a long story short, Gara's like a sand elemental, right? Like he can control sand, um, and the primary thing that it does for him is it serves as a defense. He literally doesn't have to think about it. The sand somehow on its own defends Gara from incoming attacks, which allows him to simply observe when the best moment to strike is going to be and do it ruthlessly. And so um, he's a really dangerous cat, obviously, at this point. But I wanted to you know, really address the, the sand shield uh, with Gara because that's, that's his thing. It's, it's his thing. It's like he's going to do a lot of cool shit with it. The leader of the Hidden Rain yells in response to Conqueror, basically telling him that his attempts at attacking Gara are proactively doomed. Uh, he yells, yeah, well, we'll see. 
Conqueror continues, just face it, you guys can't hope to defeat Gara. The leader of the Hidden Rain Ninja team scoffs and says, give me a break, as he rushes towards Gara. Gara lowers his head and slowly casts a hand sign. Conqueror thinks, and that punk's a dead man. And Tamari thinks, we warned him not to fight Gara. Gara then yells, sand coffin, and thrusts his right palm forward. Suddenly, the sand on the ground grabs the rushing rain shinobi by the foot. It then quickly wraps itself around him, uh, full Nelson style. And it's, the next thing we know, he's entirely entombed in this sand with the exclusion of his face. The only thing really exposed is his face. At this point, the leader of the rain shinobi, uh, who is entombed, is completely panicking and he's yelling, I can't move. Everyone watching is shocked by this display, and the Rain Ninja's umbrellas fall and stick in the ground one by one, where he's not even able to infuse chakra and keep that happening anymore. The Rain Ninja, clearly being crushed, yells, Let me go! Gara walks forward, and as he grabs, as he does this, he grabs one of the Rain Ninja's umbrella by the hilt. He then remarks, All I have to do is cover your big mouth, and you'll be dead. He then pulls the umbrella out of the ground and opens it and points it towards the uh, entombed rain ninja. He then raises the umbrella up, revealing his face, and he says, but that would be too easy and too boring. He then waves his right arm out his right side, and the entire mass of sand lifts off the ground rain ninja in tow. Gara continues to raise the ninja further and further into the air until he finally stops. He glares at him and yells, Sand Burial! And he makes a fist with his right hand and suddenly the sand implodes inwards on the rain ninja, crushing him and killing him instantly and causing blood-infused sand to rain down on the battlefield. Raining blood, just like Gara said he'd make it do. He casually stands under his defeated foe's umbrella as the blood rain falls down. He stays under the umbrella until it lets up. And everybody's clearly shocked by this when suddenly Gara addresses the two remaining hidden rain ninjas saying, There wasn't any pain. I crushed him with more force than was necessary, so it was over quickly. The corpse's bitter crimson tears flow and mingle with the endless sand, feeding the chaos within me and making me stronger. And this is nuts, right? Holy shit. Uh, so the more people that he kills with this sand, the stronger he becomes, right? So Gara now is stronger than Gara at the start of the episode. So, wow. Holy shit. That's, a, that's why Gara is so OP. One of the remaining hidden rain ninja, while terrified, begs, Just take the scroll. Go on here. Just take it. Please spare us. As he sets the scroll on the ground and begins to slowly back away. Gar then tosses the umbrella to the side and points his palms at both of the horrified rain shinobi, prospectively. And this causes them both to become wrapped up in sand, and he crushes them both in a matter of seconds. So, Gara in no time, in one episode, has killed three Hidden Rain Ginning and infused their blood into his sand and is now stronger on account of it. Wow. Uh, Kiba says to the rest of the team, hey, this is bad, we gotta get out of here before he finds and kills us, and they make a break for it. Conqueror grabs the scroll off the ground and smiles as he remarks, we got lucky, it's a heaven scroll, alright, let's head to the tower. Gara tells him, just shut up. And this confuses Konkuro, but Gara suddenly turns to him and remarks menacingly, it's still not, it's not enough for me. And this freezes Team 8 in their tracks. Kiba even thinks, oh no, did he see us? If he did, we're done for. Konkuro then says, come on, Gara, let's go. And Gara responds, what, are you scared, coward? Konkuro replies, look, Gara. I know this test is no problem for you, but it's dangerous for Tamari and me. One scroll is good enough. It's all we need to pass. 
Gara raises his palm to Conqueror as he responds, the losers can't tell me what to do. Conqueror then grabs Gara by his shirt and pulls him in close as he demands, all right, that's enough. Sometimes you have to listen to what your big brother says. And at this point, it's revealed that Conqueror is Gara's big brother. Gara, cold as hell, says, it's too bad I don't think of you as my big brother at all. If you get in my way, I'll kill you. And then slaps Conqueror's hand away as he begins to raise his palm at him. And uh, this is crazy, right? Like, the only people who can maybe control this dude in a given moment are the guys on his team. And one of them is his brother, and, like, he straight up doesn't give a shit. Like, Gara's, Gara's a bad dude, and I don't think there's any speaking reason to him at this point. Tamari interjects, wait, just hold on, Gara. You don't have to treat us like we're the enemy. Look, do it as a favor for your sister, please. And so at this moment, it's revealed that Tamari is also Gara's sister. And so moving forward, we'll be able to refer to these guys as the Sand Siblings, is, is what I typically like to refer to them as. Gara then points his palm out directly to his right in the direction of Team 8. Uh, when he begins to create a swirling mass of sand with his hand. Hinata senses this and says, Oh no, and closes her eyes in fright. Tamari then yells out for Gara, who then abruptly closes his fist and condenses some of the sand into a solid sand cork. Gara responds, All right, this time, as he closes his sand gourd with the cork he just made from sand. He then walks off without saying another word. Conqueror and Tamari are both clearly unhappy with how they're being treated, but they're also both revealed not to have gotten the sand coffin to sand burial ultra combo that he was threatening them with. Conqueror thinks to himself as Gara walks away, yeah, that's why I hate brats. And this is a, a fun callback to uh, whenever he was saying that he hates brats and when was referring to Konohamaru as a brat. The guy is traumatized. He's got a fucking little brother who's clearly capable and is not shy about threatening with uh, Conqueror with death. And so, yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like people who remind you of those type of circumstances. Just makes common sense. At this point, teammate takes a collective relieved breather. Um, Kiba remarks aloud to Akamaru, well, I guess now we know why you were so freaked out. I just wish you would have said something sooner. Teammate then makes their way to the central tower, and when they get there, it's apparent that the place is empty, which Hinata remarks on, saying, no one's here. Kiba laughs triumphantly, proclaiming, proclaiming, we're first. Shino demands, no, I'm sure there's the scent from someone here a little while ago. Hinata then rubs Akamaru's face as she goes, more importantly, is Akamaru okay? Poor little guy's been scared for so long. Shino adds, come to think of it, what did Akamaru say before? To which Kiba responds, well, I guess he must have been saying that the bigger ninja was in trouble because the little pipsqueak was going to kill him. Suddenly, Team 8 is interrupted by the sound of someone speaking somewhere in the tower. The voice says, just like I thought, there's no other place to go. Another voice responds, We've already waited half a day. How much longer are they going to make us wait? When suddenly the Sand Siblings turn the corner. Teammate freezes with fright as the Sand Siblings pass by. As Gara passes, he glances at them out of the corner of his eye, and this terrifies everyone on the team immediately. They pass, and Kiba thinks, I don't know what that Sands Village squirt is, but whatever he is, he's way too dangerous to mess with. He's bad news. It then takes us to another room somewhere in the tower where Anko re remarks to the two Anbu dudes that are in the room with her. This is turning into a real mess, but there's no way we can cancel the test. One of the Anbu responds, what do you mean? when suddenly one of the sentinels busts into the room with, I'm sorry to interrupt. Anko frustratedly uh, asks, what do you want? We're talking about something important. The sentinel chokes up, but spits it out. Uh, I'm sorry, but this, is, but this tape, you have to see it. He then pulls out an old school VHS tape. LOL, OMG, come on, bro. Like you tell, this is 
produced 20 years ago. One of the Ambu asks, what is it? And the Sentinel gets the video prepped and says, okay, when you watch this, pay special attention to the time. The time shows it's 1607, and it's a video of the Sand siblings walking around the inside of the tower. Anko is clearly shocked by this and remarks, whoa, but that means, and the Sentinel interrupts, that's right, Anko, this was recorded from inside the tower. It's unbelievable. Those ninja finished with only an hour and 37 minutes after the test started. They completely destroyed the record for the second test. Anko stands up as she remarks, what? That's impossible. The Sentinel continues, it took just 97 minutes. Nothing like this has ever happened before. No one's even come close. Those ninja from the Sand Village are way above Guinean level. They beat the record by four hours. Anko responds, I'm afraid it's not just that. The Sentinel asks, I don't get it. What do you mean? Anko asks, it's 10 kilometers from the test entrance gates to the tower, and in between are ferocious animals and poison insects, not to mention the other ninja. Could they really have avoided all those things, especially the brown-haired kid in front? The Sentinel asks, what's so special about him? Anko asks, you mean you didn't see? It then shows us Gara walking by on the video again. One of the Ambu sees this and remarks aloud, interesting, that's quite a surprise. The Sentinel asks, I still don't get it. What am I supposed to be seeing here? Anko hits him with a, it's what you're not seeing. Look closely at his body. And the Sentinel takes a hard look and responds, I see it now. Anko adds, not one single scratch. And I haven't even been able to spot one little speck of dirt on his clothing. The Sentinel looks on at the video as he thinks, not even I, no, none of the Chunin would be able to make it to the tower without at least getting a scratch, it's impossible. One of the Anbu remarks, he must have some special ability. And the other Anbu adds, it's been a long time since we've had such a promising candidate, but his eyes are pure evil. The video cuts off and the episode ends. And this is a dope episode, man. Um, we got to see some shit go down this episode. I've got some notes here, um, but my final thoughts on the episode are that um, I'm really glad that Naruto's finally awake. It seemed like he was asleep for like fucking 10 episodes or something. So um, shout out Choji for hitting him on the head with a stick and finally actually getting him woke up and caught up with what's happening in the here and now. Uh, it was cool seeing all the Leaf Village uh, Genin grow and bond together after defeating the Sound Ninja, right? Um that was a big moment. They all had to help one another, right? They were dealing with a threat that, you know, it's not like they were dealing with guys who were just like really good at the test, right? They were dealing with guys who were playing by a set of rules that were outside of what the test provided. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wild deal and they all got through it and props to the props to the hidden leaf. Rest in peace. Soccer was long hair. Um, you know, she was growing it out for Sasuke, but um, she cut it off to save Sasuke, right? Like, grow it out to court him, cut it off to save him. It's an appropriate decision. Uh, Gara is a fucking savage. Dude is more worried about more worried about bloodlust than the test. Him and his team destroyed the previous record for the second phase of the tuning exam by a whopping four hours. It only took them 97 minutes. So that means that the 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 previous record was five hours in 37 minutes and these guys got it done in 97 minutes and you can imagine there's been some dope ass shinobi who've come through and done this you know what i'm saying like i'm certain they keep track so uh crazy deal like really really how how goddamn strong is gara i can't believe gara killed all three of them hidden rain ninja like, wow, like a so savage, you, you know, I understand killing the first one, the one who was like, we're going to kill you. And he's like, killed him back. Sure. Right. But like those other two were like, hey, bro, whoa, 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 we're way too strong. No, thanks. And then he just went ahead and killed him, too, um, which is like clear, clear bad guy activity, like super bad guy activity. You could even see that it almost uh, I mean, I don't know if I don't know if it bothered Tamari and Conqueror, but I know it definitely bothered Tamari and Conqueror whenever he started directing that energy at them. 
right? Um, you know, they're his siblings, and he's flat ass out like, I don't think of you as my big brother. Get in my way, I'll fucking kill you type shit. So um, Gar is definitely like solo dolo in this bitch. Um, it's dope that his sand defense happens on its own, right? Like, he literally doesn't even have to think about it. Like, if he was sitting there, like, not paying attention to you and you threw a rock at him, the sand would stop it on its own. So that's really, really cool. Uh, it's going to be neat to see how that actually works, what's going on there. Um, his sand coffin to sand burial ultra combo is obviously a fucking hitter. Like, obviously a hitter. Don't mess with that. Uh, dude literally made it rain blood. Um, and did that toying with the guy. He didn't have to do that. Did it because the guy made it rain sin bond on him, so he made it rain him. Um, so shit, watch out what you do to Gara. Crazy that the blood of his enemies infuse with his sand and it makes him stronger. Like every time that he infuses more blood into his sand, it makes him stronger. Holy shit. So, uh, like, Gara's now, like, three people stronger. I don't know exactly how much stronger he gets per person killed, but he's at least added three bodies worth of uh, mass, crushed human mass, into his fucking gourd. So, wow, we're going to see how that goes. Um, Gara doesn't even think of his siblings as siblings. He's clearly off of his rocker. Conqueros, yeah, that's why I hate Brat's remark is a, is a, a clear uh, callback to whenever he was referring to Konohamaru as a brat, whenever they had their run in. And so uh, maybe Conqueror has some traumatic stress associated with how the brat that is his younger brother treats him, and so we can't treat brats well anymore. Uh, you know, we'll, I'm certain it'll get explored more if that's something they want to go over. Uh, it was cool getting to see Hinata use her Byakugan. Um, you know, we've only, like, seen it activated a few times. We've never actually seen, uh, you know, a Hyuga clan member get to move their perspective around uh, to a point other than where their body is via the Byakugan. She was flat-ass out, able to go and see Gara a kilometer away with her Byakugan, which is really cool. Uh, too bad Kiba's a dumbass and literally used her Byakugan to take them straight into the worst possible place. They should have went straight to the tower, but instead, everyone on Team 8 has PTSD now. Congrats, Kiba. Um, cool that Akamaru can sniff out Chakra the way that he does. Uh, it's wild how Gara's Chakra scared him like that. Uh, and it's funny how Kiba assumed that the big guy was the one with the big Chakra because he was big. Uh, Kiba's learning lessons the hard way and on the fly today. Uh, teammate Loki ain't no slouches, though. Like, remember, they trapped an enemy team right off the bat, got their scroll, and were the second to finish behind a team that literally set the record, right? Like, if, if you were to take away Gara and the Sand siblings right now, like, Kiba and the gang would be like the boss hogs of the tuning exam right now, but they just have like these literally um, outlying, anomalously powerful group of guys who are who are uh, the Sand siblings who are participating in the tuning exams. I mean, even per the Anbu guys and the Sentinel, I don't remember exactly who said it, but someone in the conversation with Anko was very clear about the Sand siblings being much stronger than what you'd expect a getting level Shinobi to be. Uh, Anko and them don't quite know how to deal with Gara and them finishing up so early it's, and with so little damage, it's literally uh, unprecedented. And one of the guys, um, one of the Ambu guys, you know, gives Gara his props saying that it's been a long time since they've had such a promising prospect, but that he can see that it's pure evil in Gara's eyes. And, uh, you know, shit, guys, with that, I feel like I've covered plenty. You know, I'm certain that we could talk more. I could talk about this for days. If there was something important that happened that ties into stuff later or that ties into something that's already happened that I missed, hop in the comments, let me know, um, you know, because I, I want to be held accountable, right? I want to do a good job on this. And so, you know, if you guys start pointing out stuff, maybe I can do a better job moving forward. Um, beyond that, if you're going to be in the comments, you'd be nice. The point is to be nice, find like-minded individuals that we can all jive with and have a good time. If you're a troll or a mean person, get on out of here. But... Uh, at any rate, I'm Joshua. I'm your Konoha companion. I really appreciate everybody for tuning in. Good vibes for everybody. I hope you guys are doing great. Travel safe between here and the next one. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, guys.